Howdy, hello guys and gals. We're here to talk about freezing batteries, specifically freezing lithium ion batteries like you'd find in your in your power tools or in a lot of the other applications these days. You know, cell phones, whatnot. There's lots of places where you'll find lithium ion batteries. And I get a lot of, uh, I, I see a lot of incorrect information out there on the internet. Now, I'm not a chemist or a physicist or about, and I'm, I don't know who, I guess probably chemist because these are chemical reactions. Uh, that's not what I am. Uh, what I'm somebody who's done a deep dive uh, on these kind of stuff, done my own research, as well as have contacts in the tool industry for people who actually make the tools, reach out to them and talk to them about it, see what they say. And here's the truth what it, about what it is when it comes to lithium ion batteries. And that is, you do not want to use them when it's cold out. <laughs> But sometimes you have to. So how safe is safe? How safe is not safe? And how cold is too cold, even if you're just storing them? All right, so we're gonna jump into it. I'm gonna show you some of the data that we found and uh, let you know what our conclusions were. And maybe you can comment down below with what your experience has been. So let's get to the data on this. All right, we're gonna break this down into three categories here. Use, charging, and storage. Of course, the first one is people want to talk about is can I use, especially my outdoor electric tools, can I use them in the cold? And the answer is yes. You're going to get varying degrees of use out of them. But here's what we're going to, here's what we've learned from this. The first thing we want to talk about is, and let me pull it up here, is that you have to talk about what kind of batteries you have. Now, consumer electronic batteries, they're going to be the middle of the road. HEV, military, NASA's way out there. We're not going to talk about that. But basically, the better quality battery you buy, the more the wider the range you're going to have for use for store for all three categories okay but what you can't get away from is that you're going to have a sweet spot in the middle and then you're going to have degrading effects on either side now i'm going to say this going cold for your battery as far as far as its lifespan its uh its continued use going cold is going to be better than going hot hot causes damage from the get-go it, it just and it leads eventually to what we call thermal runaway which is bad stuff that's when uh you know fire departments get called stuff like that thermal runaway bad okay cold generally speaking just leads towards sluggishness it, it the the electrical reaction that happens in the battery just doesn't happen as well the colder it gets now you're gonna be stunned to find out that the mean, the, the middle road, if you would, is going to be from 15C to 35C. Now, I'm not much in into Celsius, but if I'm not mistaken, 15C is uh, around just under 60 degrees. And I think 35 is like 95 degrees. I could be wrong, but I think you're right in that area. So anything under 60 is where you start to see drop off in performance. Now, you may not see it much because we're using fairly, at this point, fairly advanced, well-made batteries that are designed for this sort of thing. So they probably have maybe a slightly more of a bump, but they also have a higher discharge where you're not really going to see it uh, until you get into really the extreme temps. Now, once you get below freezing, once you get below 32, we start to, that's when you'll start to really see uh, a noticeable uh, sluggishness in your tools. They're not going to work the same way. Now, can you use them? You can. Are you going to, are you going to damage them? Probably not. Now, the other section is this, and I'm talking to down to, down to freezing. Uh, the other thing is charging and charging. You always want to try and do between that 15 to 35. In fact, you probably want to do it around what I consider a comfortable room temperature. If you can walk around without a jacket or without having to take clothes off or kick on the AC, you're probably in a, a temperature range that the battery likes. Honestly, the batteries are kind of like you. They're like, I want to sit around in some shorts and a t-shirt and I don't want to be too cold and I don't want to be too hot. And as long as you're doing that, your batteries are kind of going to probably be fine. Just the rule of thumb is, don't leave, if you're using the batteries, if you're going to be using the tool, you're like, okay, I've got this tool, can I set it down outside? Yes. How cold is it though? Is it really getting cold? Are we in like Montana, you know, kind of winter? Uh, I say that because this, today has been the first day where it's gotten above, uh, uh, gotten above zero <laughs> in about, in almost a week. Uh, it's been chilly around here. But as I said, you know, this is, uh, this is a high quality tool and they make high quality batteries. They're one of the best battery manufacturers in the market. So you can probably rely on a tool or something like this to do better in the lower temps. But the more you push it, the more you're rolling those dice. When it comes to charging, however, I wouldn't roll the dice. I would definitely say, 
Keep it at, at a comfortable-ish temperature, something between 15 and 30. That's between 60 and 90. Honestly, I wouldn't even go as high as 90. I probably 16 and, and, and 80 is, is where, or 60 and 80, that's where I would want to be. Oh, also, if you want to read some of the data on this, uh, I've got a paper right here that you can read here. It's from sciencedirect.com. It's a full uh, paper talking about the introduction, the effects of temperature on LIBs, that's lithium-ion batteries. Approaches to internal temperature, conclusions, acknowledgments, references, the whole nine yards. Plus, I also reached out to several of the manufacturers I know. Now, the manufacturers, I'm going to say this, they like to err on the side of, uh, you know, their warranty. <laughs> they're like, I wouldn't push it for this. I wouldn't go over that. They're, they're going to be a lot more, uh, you know, conservative in their estimates because they don't want to put you in a situation where you're kind of on the border there. So just, uh, just make sure you take that into consideration. Now, the next thing is storage. And storage is a big deal because especially you guys who are in the trades, especially if you have a truck like this, it's full of batteries. You're like, do I have to do I have to put my truck in the garage? Do I have to heat my garage? Do I have to go and get all my tools and bring them in? And the answer there is maybe. Uh, it really depends on how cold it gets, all right? Now, uh, the guys over at... Uh, Battleborn batteries. And I guess say this is. I know this company. Uh, I don't have any of their stuff, but I know people who do. Um, of course, they're uh, Battleborn. You know, they're based out of Nevada, and uh, the uh, I always get a kick out of the the Battleborn slogan in Nevada. But uh, the point is. They say here that uh, some battery chemistry like lead acid can freeze and explode. And I can remember back in the day seeing car batteries that had done that. Anyway, this happens when the battery is discharged, the electric light becomes watered down. Anyway, this is not the case with lithium ion batteries. It's a different chemistry. They, do, they work differently. There's nothing in this battery here that is going to pop, as it were. Unlike the 24 pack of sodas the wife left in my shop. <laughs> They luckily they were in one of those big totes because they did pop. There's a giant pile of of uh, Coke flavored ice in that bucket. Uh, anyway, I don't have to deal with it. That's all her. So <laughs> the uh, th this isn't going to freeze and get damaged in the same kind of way. And it says here uh, that they don't they don't uh, freeze during. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. However, charging lithium battery during freezing temperatures can cause damage to the battery. Again use and that's the type of use is charging versus storage now when it comes to storage though as i said it may not be the battery that has the issue it could be the components of the battery it could be the board it could be the connectors there's lots of things that cold especially extreme cold like we had here negative 27 not including wind chill there's things like that that can really damage it and yes in prepping for this, I did leave this out, and it got to probably about, well, we're down to there, probably got around negative 28, 29. So we're going to see, does this thing still work? Now, the one thing I will say is, let me press the little charging button. We'll see if we get any charge lights on it. Look at that, 4 by 4 Looks pretty good. Anyway, we'll try it later in the video. So, and that's one of the things is I'm letting it bring up to room temperature. I've got, I had the heater going on before, before I opened the door and let all the heat out. So we're trying to heat it back up. We're going to let it come up to temp and then we'll see what happens there. But, uh, and then if you don't believe uh, uh, Battleborn, you can talk over here to Golden uh, Matten Energy. Sorry, Golden Matt Energy or Golden Mate, I, my bad. And uh, they say the same thing. Yes, but it, you know, can you let it freeze? Yes, but it depends on a few things. There's not a fixed value. But the, the thing that I have heard is that uh, essentially it comes down to uh, about negative five Fahrenheit. We're talking Fahrenheit here because I'm in the U.S. So negative five is about the max that you reasonably can let it discharge to. Now, I've seen several things that say it can go as low as negative 20 and something something saying, that, hey, if it's really well made, it can go even lower than that. But don't run it at those temperatures. If you do let them go that low, then, then, you know, let them warm back up and let them warm back up slowly. Don't set them, don't bring them back in and put them in front of the heat. You want to let them get back up to speed. Well, there you go. So hopefully some of you now realize that maybe you don't have to run out to your, your tool truck and pull all your batteries out, but maybe you still want to. I understand it. The, the basic gist of it is you can store batteries to a pretty cold temperature as long as you're not charging them or using them. As far as how cold well it really depends on the quality of the battery if it's a cheap no-name kind of battery i wouldn't push it if it's a higher end battery like like flex here this one was in the cold 
honestly too cold. I get it, I let it get down to negative 20. I don't know as far as long-term damage what may have happened to it, but right now, it runs just fine. Anyway, let me know what you think. Put your comments down below. While you're down there, go ahead and chomp the old like button. Smash the subscribe <laughs> if I can get it out. Ring the bell. It's chilly out here. Ring the bell. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.